How would you evaluate this integral? Let's say if we wish to calculate the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. How can we get the answer? And this particular integral, is it convergent or is it divergent? How do we tell? Well, if we get a finite number, L, let's say if the limit exists, that would mean that it converges to a value. However, let's say if we don't get a finite number, let's say we get infinity, then we could say the integral is divergent. So this is called an improper integral. When you see infinity either in the lower or in the upper limit of the integral sign. So how do we evaluate this? Well first, we need to replace infinity with some variable, which in this case will be t. So we're going to express it as a limit. So we're going to say the limit as t approaches infinity of the integral 1 to t 1 over x dx. Now what is the antiderivative of 1 over x? Well we know it to be ln x, but first we need to rewrite the limit expression. So we have the limit as t approaches infinity, ln x evaluated from 1 to t. So now based on the fundamental theorem of calculus, we can rewrite this expression as ln t. We're going to replace x with t first, and then we're going to replace x with 1. So it's ln t minus ln 1. So we have the limit as t approaches infinity, ln t, and then minus the limit as t approaches infinity, ln 1. Now ln 1 is simply 0. So we can get rid of this expression. That becomes 0. So all we have is just the limit as t approaches infinity for the natural log of t. And the natural log of infinity, well, that's going to be infinity. So this is the answer. Because we don't have a finite number, we could say this particular improper integral is divergent. It doesn't converge. Now let's try another example. So let's integrate 1 over x squared from 1 to infinity. Feel free to pause the video if you want to work out this example. So let's begin by converting this expression into a limit expression. So we have the limit as t goes to infinity for 1 to t. And this is 1 over x squared dx. Now let's begin by finding the antiderivative of 1 over x squared. So what's the first thing we need to do here? We need to rewrite the expression. So we need to take the x variable, move it to the top, so it becomes x raised to the negative 2. The 2 becomes negative once you move the variable to the top. Now we need to use the power rule for integration. So if we add 1 to negative 2, it becomes negative 1, and then we're going to divide by that result. So rewriting the expression, taking the x variable and bringing it back to the bottom, we're going to have negative 1 over x plus c. So the antiderivative of 1 over x squared is negative 1 over x. So we're going to have the limit as t goes to infinity. And this is going to be negative 1 over x evaluated from 1 to t. So this is going to be the limit as t goes to infinity. And then first we're going to replace x with t. And so that's going to be negative 1 over t. And then minus, now we're going to replace x with 1. So it's minus negative 1 over 1. So let's go ahead and simplify what we have. 
So this is the limit as t goes to infinity. And so it's negative 1 over t. And then negative times negative 1, that simply becomes positive 1. So now let's apply this expression, the limit as t goes to infinity of negative 1 over t. What is that equal to? So if we have negative 1 over infinity, what should we get? When you divide by a very large number, you're going to get a small number. So this will approach 0. So this is going to be 0 plus 1, thus the answer is positive 1. So because we have a finite number, we could say that this integral converges. And so that's it for this problem. The last two examples can be explained by something known as the P-series. And you're going to hear more about this series as you progress in Calc 2. But let me give you the gist of it. So let's say we have this particular improper integral. Now, if P is greater than 1, this integral will be convergent. And if P is less than or equal to 1, this particular improper integral will be divergent. And we saw that to be true in the last two examples. So in the first example, where we had 1 over x, let me write the uh, limits of integration. In this example, p was equal to 1. And we saw that it was divergent because our answer was infinity. So this case applied. In the second example, we had this problem, but this time p was equal to 2. And in this case, we got 1 as our answer. So we can see that if p is greater than 1, the series will be convergent. But if it's less than or equal to 1, it's divergent, as we saw in the first example. Now let's work on another example. So go ahead and determine if this particular improper integral is convergent or divergent. So we have 1 over 3x plus 1 squared. Now, based on the p-series, would you say it's convergent or divergent? Now, this expression is very similar to the integral of 1 over x squared dx, where p is 2. So just by comparison, if this particular improper integral is convergent, then it's safe to assume that this one is also convergent. But now let's go ahead and prove it by getting the answer. So we shouldn't get infinity as an answer. We should get a finite number like 5, 8, or 1 half or something like that. So let's begin by rewriting this as a limit. So we have the limit as t approaches infinity for the integral 1 to t. 1 over 3x plus 1 squared dx. Now, I'm going to take a minute and focus on just finding the antiderivative of this expression. So we're going to have to use u substitution. So let's set u equal to 3x plus 1. That means du, the derivative of 3x plus 1, is 3 times dx. And now, if we divide both sides by 3, dx is going to be du over 3. So we can substitute 3x plus 1 with the u variable. So we're going to have 1 over u squared, and then we can replace dx with du over 3. So what I'm going to do is move the 3 to the front and move the u variable to the top. So this becomes 1 third integral u to the negative 2 du. So the antiderivative of u to the negative 2, it's going to be u to the negative 1 divided by negative 1. And if we rewrite it, it's going to be negative 1 over 3 times u. 
if we bring the u variable back to the bottom. So now our last step is to replace u with 3x plus 1. So we're going to get negative 1 over 3 times 3x plus 1 plus c. So that's the antiderivative of this expression. So now what we have is the limit as t goes to infinity. And so we can replace this with what we have here. So it's negative 1 over 3 times 3x plus 1. And we don't need to worry about the constant c. And so we're going to evaluate this from 1 to t. So this becomes the limit as t goes to infinity. And we can replace x with t. So it's 3 times 3t three plus 1. And then it's going to be minus. Now we need to plug in 1 into this expression. And so don't forget there's another negative sign. It's very easy to forget that. So replacing x with 1 is just going to be 3 and then plus 1. So what I'm going to do here is distribute the 3. So this is now negative 1 over 3 times 3t, so that's 9t. And then we have 3 times 1. Now these two negative signs will cancel. So it's going to be plus 1. And here we have 3 plus 1, which is 4, times 3. That gives us 12. Now what is the limit as t goes to infinity for this expression, negative 1 over 9t plus 3? Now we know that's going to become 0. And so it's going to be 0 plus 1 over 12. So the final answer is 1 over 12. And because it's not infinity, this is convergent. So that's the answer. For those of you who may want to show why this is equal to 0, here's what you can do. So first, you need to keep in mind that the limit as t goes to infinity for 1 over t is 0. So starting with this expression, what you need to do is multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over t. And so you're going to get the limit as t goes into infinity, negative 1 over, over t, divided by, so here, 9t times 1 over t, the t's will cancel. And so you're just going to get 9, and then plus 3 over t. So as t goes into infinity, we know that 1 over t becomes 0. So this becomes, I guess you could say negative 0, which is the same as 0. And then 9 plus, this is 3 times 1 over t, if you uh, see it this way. And so that becomes 3 times 0. And so you get 0 over 9, which is 0. So that's how you could show that the limit goes to 0 for this example. But for the problem, it was 0 plus 1 over 12, so the final answer is 1 over 12.